Hello everyone, Andrew here again, 42 Gear Street, Studio B. Today we are going to be taking a look at an orange Super Crush 100 to Adam's left with Adam Steele. And we're also going to be using a Jupiter FX Mayo pedal, which you can see on the floor here. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, the, the premise of this video and the reason why I wanted to do it with Adam is, as you know if you watch my channel, primarily what I do is low-tuned metalcore, deathcore stuff. And I kind of come from the opposite side of things where I grew up using modelers and plugins and I'm still pretty new to amps. So I feel a little overwhelmed when I'm playing with pedals and amps just cause like, obviously I know how to use them but I'm still like a little intimidated, I guess you could say. Right. Um, and the other reason I wanted to do it with Orange in particular was because I usually don't necessarily think of Orange as an amp associated with low tuned metalcore, deathcore. Right. But I was talking to Charlie from Orange Amps, and we thought it would be interesting to see how we could make it sound for this context of music, basically. Yes. And uh, yeah, Adam, why don't you tell them a bit about yourself and why you're helping me with all this? <laughs> sure. So I'm a massive amp nerd, and just generally a nerd in general. Uh, the, I've been doing production for nearly 20 years, but I approach it from the nerd angle of how does this work, and why does it work that way? And so because I run a professional studio, so quite often you don't have the time to sit and try 20 different amps. When a guitarist says, well, this sound isn't right for me, I'm not feeling this, I have to be able to go, right, you want this one, yeah, and then dial it in super fast. Interpret what I'm trying to tell you right. in a technical way. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, so that's what I do, so I'm here to help. Perfect. So without further ado, yeah. I'll put this on the game channel. The mail boost is off to begin with. Yes. Just so you can get a feel for this is how the amp feels without a boost. Mm -hmm. And then you can tell me what you want more of, less of, because I, I just did a video with Scott Elliott from Chernobyl, mm -hmm. and I think I'm gonna dial this very differently for you. Right, even though him. we tuned to the same tuning, right? Right, okay. because he's more into like the death metal yeah. and the kind of tremolo pick mm -hmm. and drone notes and that kind of, but I think yours is much more defined. Yeah, a little bit more like modern metalcore, a right. chanty, if you will. Um, yeah, and by the way, speaking of that, before we move on, I'm tuned to drop A using an Ibanez Iceman 7-string. Shall, shall we get started? Yeah, just give, give me something that's... Okay, so good. this is just the amp by itself, nothing else. Pretty, it's pretty brutal, but what are we feeling? Because the game staging is important to me. For sure, yeah. So it sounds really good, but usually when I, you know, do stuff like this, I would run a boost in front of it, which is why yeah, which we, we are that gonna going do. on. Um, but we can but focus in, of, on, in on what that does because it's fairly versatile. True, true. But I'm talking like, does the mid need to jump out anymore, right. more? Or do you feel like it needs to be scooped more? Or do you want it brighter? Do you okay. want more of a more of a, 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 the kind of game where it's constant or do you want less so that mm. you can dig in. Right, right. Um, let me play around a little bit more. Sure. So what I'm hearing that I would want to change is definitely have less bass because since I'm okay. tuned a little bit lower, Got you. Um, I like it to be a little clearer, less muddy in that region. It seems like the controls on the Super Crush are really, like, you know, some amps, the difference between 0 and 10 is, like, it's not that much. Right. This is a huge, huge, like, I turned the mids down from, like, there to there, and suddenly it was scooped. Right. It's like, Big yeah. difference. With so, a little yeah, loop. so I've got to be super careful. Okay. You want me to keep playing? So, or? Yeah. I mean, with the low end not responding right, I think that's going to be True. fixed with the Mayo. True. Anything else? Like, do you want it to be more... Uh, gnarly or more just fuzzy or mm. less fuzzy? Um, or... I think other than the, the low end, I'm pretty pretty happy with how this is sounding so far. Cool. Well, in that case, it's time for some flavor. It sounds good. Add the mayo. So from what Chris from Jupiter FX was saying, the mayo pedal with all the knobs to the left is pretty much nothing. Yeah. And then so the boost is more noise the low gets rid of, like you were saying, that wub 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 kind exactly. of thing. Exactly. And then if we want more shine and more bite on the top end, we crank this kind of, it's not a variable knob, it goes click, 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 mm -hmm. the top one. 
So, uh, if you want to do a little more shredding, we'll see how we feel, because it's easy to go too far. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, okay, sure, sounds good. <laughs> So what happened there was, as I took out the low end, the boost was a little much, it was losing the definition, mm -hmm. and I turned the top until it was too much and I could hear like a clicky click in the mm -hmm. top end. So I backed that off, so that's now on three out of four on the top end, because apparently um, it's not just how much high boost is, it changes where that peak is. Right. And then it was kind of a little much, so I went back to the amp and turned the gain down a touch, turned mm -hmm. the bass down a little too. And then just brought the master volume up to give us the level back. Right, makes sense. And suddenly your eyes went, whoa. Yeah, so I was like, like, okay, that's that's, that's the it. Sound. <laughs> and this is why I need someone to explain what I'm actually looking for. Because I'm like, I, I don't necessarily know, but it sounds it, great. <laughs> it's all an interaction. Yeah. That's the thing, because you will lean into what the sound is. And if you're not feeling it, then you know it makes for a bad day. Yeah, for sure. So some amps naturally have a tone you want. Some are like the the orange stuff is so versatile; mm -hmm. it can do doom, mm -hmm. or it can do this kind of super tight thing. Yeah. But because the Mayo, which is a great pedal, it's not just like a tube screamer where it does one thing, but it only does the one thing. Right. It's got the kind of the variable thing. You've got to kind of find it because you can go too far, and then suddenly there's no chug 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 left, and it's just just angry yeah right and and it's cool you know being able to do a combination of, of different pedals versus amps for yeah. stuff like this because like obviously like my go-to normally is just like if I just put a 5115 or 2 screamer like I already know how that's gonna sound right but that's why I wanted to try this combination because mm. I haven't tried orange amps before and I yeah. was very curious if if it would respond well to the type of music that I typically play. Mm. And I don't know, man, I think so, it sounded pretty cool so far. Yeah, something that I've definitely learned about Orange stuff is even with the uh, the kind of low cut mid boost thing, mm -hmm. it's still kind of got a slightly lower mid, more kind of or kind of yeah, voice. Yeah, definitely. Than, and I like that. I don't know about you, but it means that if I was to do a track, maybe I had a quad track thing going on, mm -hmm. if you have four of the same track, you're gonna run into problems because if you've got like little spikes, of that can, that's just multiplying that. Yeah. And on its own, it can sound nice. Times up by four, and suddenly you're going ah. <laughs> exactly. But by having that slightly more kind of big dog kind of voice, of, mm -hmm. und, and kind of blend that underneath, get the two together, that can be a real massive thing. I mean, for me, the sound of like classic Slipknot, like yeah. the whole volume yeah. three thing, that's one amp that's got that more British angry thing, yeah. and an orange that's got that kind of mid, and they're hard panned. Mm -hmm. So if you go back and listen to the album volume three, listen to left ear, right ear, separate, you'll hear that. That like one of them on its own, I'm like, I don't know if I like this. Mm -hmm. And the other one, I'm like, I can't even hear I don't know if I like playing. this either. Yeah. yeah, but together you go, pow. Yeah. And it works. So yeah, definitely worth considering. and. The price on these is crazy. Yeah, crazy. and um, I think I think Charlie Fritt was saying that these are also fully solid stays. Yeah, which there's is not even crazy. a preamp valve, which as yeah. soon as... Yeah, because I, I assumed that it was preamp valves and their new kind of like hybrid output thing. Mm -hmm. No, not a single preamp valve. No. What the hell? Yeah, and it sounds awesome still. Yeah, it's not modeled. It's all, it's all genuine analog gear, but the way they've done it is some yeah. circuit that does what valves do. And they, I don't know if it was on purpose or by a stroke of good luck, but they also said they released it right around when the tube shortage started. So yeah, hey, that's perfect for uh, for a piece of gear like this. Yeah, there's absolutely going to be one of these on my amp shelf. Nice, because it's the, as a studio guy as well. Having like, I usually have a top four or top five amps. Mm -hmm. so like I've, your go tos. Yeah, got Fender Twin for the cleans. Mm -hmm. JCM 800s for the angry stuff. Mm -hmm. 5150 for the really angry stuff. <laughs> yes. Dual rectifier for mush. 
And now number five is probably going to be one of these. Well, there you go. Because then I've got almost every base covered. Yeah, I, mean, I think it sounds great. I'm going to play around with it a little more if you don't mind. Please do. Because now you got me talking, or you were talking about Slipknot. <laughs> <laughs> There's that filth to the to it as well, mm -hmm. but it's still defined. Yeah. It's clever. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. That sounds really good. Um, I think yeah. they they came up with this sound in the early seventies, but they just worked on making it you know better, refined in terms of not like you know some of the amp manufacturers they'll go we're redesigning everything. Yeah, but you don't always have to go that extreme. No. no. So apparently they've kind of gone well. This is how orange sounds. Mm -hmm. Now how do we do it with different gear? Yeah, and how do we do it again without tubes or valves and yeah. You know. like we've got the dual dark behind us, and I know that can do more gain, but do you really need more gain than mm -hmm. this? Yeah, well, especially if you're throwing pedals into the mix and all that. Yeah. yeah, well, that's the other thing is every modern metal guitar player that I know uses a, a boost pedal yeah. that scoops the low end out. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> you just do that. And I mean, exactly. the, the, this Mayo pedal, I'm definitely getting myself one of these because something I search for a lot with, because I must have 10 boost pedals yeah. in the studio. Because they all do I have slightly, a lot too. They, they do slightly different things. Well, and that's, I've heard the argument in other people, uh, or sorry, the conversation that is kind of like, well, why don't amp companies just build boost into their amps? And the reason is because there's people like us who it's like, well, like, yes, they're all boost pedals, but they all yeah. are a little bit different, yeah. and people like to, you know, add their own flavor. Like, if every single person was using, let's say, a 5150 with a built-in boost, and it's always the same boost, like, yeah. guitarists are weird like that. Like, we, we want to sound good, but yeah. we don't want to sound exactly like yeah. someone We want to sound exactly you know? like everybody else, but a little different. But a tiny bit different. A little different. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so, exactly. So, it's nice being able to obviously add whatever you want into the mix. Um, and yeah, this everything needs more awesome. mayo, so, yeah, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> awesome. Well, I don't know, I'm pretty happy with the tone. How do you feel? I feel like that was easier than it had every right to be. I agree. I, I, I figured I would have to put a little more work into it, and it very quickly just comes together, so hey. Yeah. I mean, the, the orange stuff, it is a little different from what a lot of metal guys are used to. Mm -hmm. Again, especially in, in the subgenres that I usually play, I just don't see orange very often, and that's... Like I said at the beginning of this video, why I was so curious to see if we could make it work, and I think we did a pretty good job, if I say so myself. Winner. Yeah. Okay, well, that's going to do it for this video. Again, a huge thank you to 42 Gear Street. There's a ton of videos from this event. Be sure to go check them out all over the place. Also some on Adam Steele's channel, which is going to be linked in the description and, you know, the pinned comment and all that good stuff. Mm. Um, of course, big thank you to Ibanez Orange and Jupiter Effects for lending us their gear to make this video. And I think that about covers it. So we'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Now, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs>